Hi guys and welcome to my floss tube video number four uh, where I'd like to talk to you about all the stitching I've been doing since the last time I filmed a video all the way back in January which is an awfully long time. The good news though is that it means I have loads to show you, so much in fact that I'm going to have to split this up into several videos. So this video is going to be about the finishes that I've had. So we'll get straight into it. I'm Hannah and this is Handmade. When I started making floss tube videos I never imagined that I would go so long without making a video and it kind of feels like I'm taking, I mean I've only made four videos, this is only my fourth, and it feels like I start off every video apologising for how long it's been since the last one. Um, I, I don't want to go into too much detail about what's been going on but suffice it to say life has been busy, um, we've had building work in the house, we've had this stupid heat wave which has made it ridiculously impossible to do anything. Um, I doubt any of you wanted to see, watch me sit here and just melt in front of you. Um, and also I've had a couple of health, health issues um, which are improving um, but it also had a massive effect not just on my filming videos but on my stitching. So if you can remember all the way back to my last video if you've seen it, um, I was having real trouble with my stitchy bug and I kept starting things to try and kick it back into gear. and. I had hoped at that point that I was getting back into it but as soon as I made that video it went I was really struggling with motivation and I even went a couple of weeks without stitching anything and I, I did talk about this a little bit on my Instagram and it really worried me you know like when you stop doing the things that you enjoy at least for me that's a massive red flag um, so I didn't let it go on too long, I did force myself but just to keep trying and seeing if something would eventually catch my interest. And strangely enough, it wasn't the new starts that got me back into the swing, it was going back to a really, really quite old whip. This one, and it's so big actually, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it in the whole screen, but this, now I'd done my whip parade and shown this and I had a tiny like I had oh, oh I can't even reach this tiny part up here done hardly anything oh focus there we go um but I you know I decided to pick it back I didn't have big hopes as I was saying my stitchy bug was all over the place but something about this project back in February March whenever it was got me going again Oh, doorbell. Sorry about that, that was the doorbell. But good news, stitchy stuff arrived. Beads for my mirabilia, which I'm wanting to finish. That's for another video though. Okay, so. This one, uh, this is Butterfly Fairies by Witchy Kit Designs, um, which is the project that I credit with sorting my stitchy bug out uh, in February or March, wherever it was this year. Um, I don't know what it was uh, but I just as soon as I got started working on it I just couldn't stop and I kept going and I kept going and I, I think it was the seeing the progress and then um, the colours as well I just absolutely love the colours. I mean it's so, so big this is a um, A1 piece of foam board and um, it basically it's, it, it takes up the whole board. Um, actually it was supposed to be even bigger but oh, it's the cat supposed to be even bigger, uh, it's supposed to be another butterfly up here, but I got this far and I just decided that I didn't really like the colours of the other butterfly and I thought yeah do you know what I'm happy with that, I'm going to finish now. So I cut the fabric off and um, it's really cool because that means I've got extra black even weave for other projects, which is awesome. And obviously the finish was much quicker. So yeah, really pleased with that. Um, this is one that I've mentioned before. Oh, sorry, cat. Oh. It's finally not hot here in the UK um, and raining, which we've been crying out for. But that means Paddy, who's come to say hello, is sopping wet. 
and banging against the microphone. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, Witchy Kid is like, yeah, this was the one um, I actually mentioned, I think on Instagram, I don't remember if I mentioned it last video. Um, I can't even remember what I said last time. That I was having to, it's so big that I was having to do it on my cue snaps, and now they're not actually cue snaps, they're some imitation version that you can get at Hobby Craft, which is the sort of big box craft store in the UK. Um, and I'm not a massive fan, but one of the problems that I was having with them is that they were leaving white marks all over the fabric. Now, I had suggestions from people, including Vonna, brilliant suggestion, um, that just some detergent would sort it out, and Sage that she is, she was absolutely right. I washed it with the Orvis WA paste um, that I showed maybe last video, it's the conservation, I mean it's actually horse shampoo but it's used in quilt conservation and textile conservation. Um, used that to wash it and the marks went. So hopefully I've got a photo that I'll, have, I'll put in to show the white marks. Um, and, and yeah, they're all fixed now. But suffice it to say, I'm, I'm not that impressed with Q-snaps, I'm, I'm not going to be racing to use them again. I know some people love them. But they're not for me. I much prefer my scroll frames. Um, and even, I, I guess I'll just have to limit myself to projects that I can fit in the scroll frames. If they're too big, I'll have to turn them sideways in the scroll frames. But I think my wider scroll frames are like 30 inches or something. So that should get me, you know, most of my projects. I'm not a big, massive hate stitcher like a lot of you are. So I should be okay. So I finished that on the 23rd of March. Um, it's on 27 count Linda, Zweigart Linda, in black, which is a fabric that I really like. I mean, it's because I lay my threads, um, the, the coverage ends up okay, actually. It can be a little bit, but it's not too bad. It's basically the same as 14 count. I mean, that, that half a thread per inch doesn't make that much difference. So, yeah, it was all DMC really easy, really enjoyable, um, used, it came as a PDF electronic pattern so I just used my PDF reader app on my phone, I think it was, to, to mark off what I'd done on that and part of the reason that it was so fun as well is that um, as you might, that you might notice a bit of a trend with the sort of patterns, the charts, designs that I like to do but any clever use of the negative space I really really enjoy. Now this one actually, the, the black in the wings, I would, I would show you but the cat, <laughs> um, is actually charted to be stitched in 310, but stitching it on black fabric, I was like, I haven't got time for that. Um, so I just left it out and you can't tell it looks great. So I've no idea what I'm going to do with it, um, finishing framing wise, well, probably, maybe I'll make it all hanging out of it. I had, did have a thought, a thought about... Um, making a wooden frame and kind of stretching it over like a canvas I'd obviously have to put some black fabric behind it so over the frame first like a canvas and then um, stretching the fabric over that I might possibly actually be able to just get a white standard artist canvas that's a, a, an appropriate size and then paint it black and then stretch over that so there might be something to think about but probably if not that, probably some sort of wall hanging. <laughs> oh, Paddy. Um, yeah. So when I can put the cat down, I'll come back and show you the back. So here we are, here's the back, and you can actually see some of the white marks that I was talking about here that um, somehow I managed not to wash off. Don't quite know what happened there. But here we are, here's the back. Oh, oh sorry, the cat's still on my lap. <laughs> here we are. So here we are, here's the back. Um, just, you know, pretty neat, I think. Uh, there's a few struggly long ends and, and whatnot, but... Yeah, not bad. Um, yeah, it really helps to do the what is it called? Pin stitch. Pin stitch method. But there we are. 
there you go, we're back. While I was having problems with my stitchy bag, I did actually manage to do a bit of fully finishing. Um, some of it wasn't actually cross stitch, but in March in the UK, it's Mother's Day, and my mum tends to see things I'm stitching and ask if she can have them. And this was one of the things that I did that we managed to get framed for Mother's Day. And there's terrible, oh gosh, you can see the mess in the room. <laughs> um, oh, there we go. It was the Lady in Black um, design by Design Works. Um, there we go. Sorry, there's nothing I can do about all the glare. Um, we ordered the frame online. Um, we had some other artwork, some of the prints that we wanted to get frames, so we ordered the frames all at the same time. Um, and whoops, I just stretched it over foam board and framed it myself. It ended up a bit thick, so um, rather than putting any hardboard backing in or anything like that, I just covered it with some brown paper and some tape and then put in the hanging hardware there. Not very fancy, just, you know, standard stuff. Um, and yeah, she's really pleased. It's, it hangs in the living room um, opposite her chair, so she gets to look at it all the time, which is cool. I'm quite pleased. And um, the, the, the mounts actually, the, the mount board, uh, the mats, I think, you guys in the US we'll call them. Um, they're actually a different colour than I expected them to be. Well, because we, we, it was one of these websites where you can upload the photograph of your your artwork, your stitching in my case, and um, pick the frame, the moulding and the, the, the mounts. Um, and like play around with the colours and things and it gives you a preview of what you can expect it to look like. Um, so they came out, they're actually it's like a kind of a charcoal grey and a yellow, which is a bit different to what I was expecting. Um, I'm not entirely convinced about the yellow against the gold inside of the moulding, but it does pick up colours within like sort of her skin tone. And then the, the charcoal grey um, of the, that mat does pick up the grey in her dress. So yeah, pretty pleased with that. So after the Butterfly Fairies finish, I got on a bit of a roll and decided to pick up some other whips and see if I could finish those off. Um, and 2018 has turned out to be the year of mirabilia for me. Um, and this was the first of my mirabilia finishes this year, which I have a few to show you today. And hopefully I'll have more to show you the second half of the year. But here we go, this is Angel of the New Dawn. Now she is one I think I've spoke before about the fabric colour, maybe on a video, otherwise it would have been on my Instagram. Um, but she's, the, the, the called for fabric is a blue colour, I don't know which, I, I don't recall, but I think it's, um, I think it's a colour that's no longer in production. Um, so there is an alternative Zweigart ice blue um, fabric given on the chart. But the I, I felt because her dress is all blue, um, sh her, her dress would kind of fade into the background and her wings being these greens and golds and yellow colours would really stand out and I'm I, I was caught in two minds about whether to even stitch this project in the first place because it's an angel and I'm not um, I'm not religious and so it, it just felt a bit strange I couldn't imagine and in fact I still can't imagine having an angel up on my wall and someone in a video a long time ago I, I forget who pointed out that you don't believe that mermaids and fairies are real and you've got no problem stitching those 
so why should angels be any different? So that's what prompted me to go for it, because I think she's beautiful, she's got a lovely face. Um, but I didn't want to stitch it on this blue fabric and then just have all that stands out at you be the wings. It just, yeah, it didn't, it didn't sit right with me. So I decided to change the fabric colour and I went with this. It's um, 28 counts Vigart Brittany in cream. So just a, an even weave. It was just a piece that I had in my stash. I was looking for what I had. And um, as fate would have it, this was the only piece of fabric in my stash that was big enough because it's, it's quite a long, um, long design. And I think this is slightly more than a fat quarter in length. Um, I don't even know why I had it, what I bought it for <laughs> in the first place. Um, but it worked really well. And I think, yeah, I think she's lovely. And, and now that I've had some time away from her, I finished her in, let me have a look. I finished her right at the end of Jan uh, January, right at the end of March, 31st of March. Um, so now that I've had some time away from her, not looking at her, um, she is absolutely lovely. I'm really pleased with how she came out on the cream. She's really enjoyable to stitch. There's not much beading actually. Um, it's, well, it's all concentrated in her halo and a little bit in her dress. There's nothing else in this bottom half of the design. And in fact, all of it's the same story with the metallic, all the metallic is up in this um, arch, keystone, I don't know, top of the arch and um, a little bit in her headdress. So it was really nice, straightforward, um, enjoyable stitch, lots of big areas of the same colour. I didn't have a problem stitching that much white, in fact it's not really that much when I compare it to some of the ones that I'm stitching at the moment. Um, yeah, really pleased with her. And it's not one that you see stitched often, um, which is a shame because she's really lovely, but maybe maybe you guys are having the same issues that I, or hang-ups that I had with her being an angel. Let me know what you think on that subject. And here we are, I'm going to show you the back because there's nothing wrong with showing your back, there's nothing to be ashamed of, even if it is a bit messy. And there we go, I don't think that's too bad either. Pin stitch, I have to say, sort of revolutionised my stitching, that with parking. Because it's now no longer a hassle to secure the thread, cut it off and start again somewhere else. So I am much, much less likely to have these really long um, sort of strands on the back where I've moved from, jumped from one area to the other because I just couldn't be bothered to turn over. So that's a tip for you. Hey, and then I was on a roll with finishing Mirabilia projects that I had started, so I picked up Siren and the Shipwreck. Oh, I wish, I, I can't get far enough away, especially with the cat in my lap. <laughs> I can't get far enough away to show you the whole of her, which is a right shame. But there we go, that's, that's, there she is. So uh, yeah, Siren and the Shipwreck. Um, finished her only a few days later, about a week later, oh sorry cat, um, a few days later, the beginning of April, she's stitched on the called for, what is it called? 32 count C Lily Linen, which is quite hard to say. Um, yeah, no changes, all the called for treasures, I bought it as a kit, I think, um, off eBay. So it came with all the called for everything, and um, I wish I learnt how to press things before starting, still haven't learnt that trick, um, really bad habit. But yeah, beautiful, all the Karen water lilies, there's two colours spread through her tail, which are lovely to work with. I mean, I do, I don't know that I'd say that they were essential in the designs. Um, they're really lovely to have, and they do add a bit of depth with the changing of the colours but you could get away with without using them, no problem. So, okay, just moved over a bit, there we are. Yeah, she's beautiful, um, need to get her framed, <laughs> along with everything else, uh, to hang on all this wall space that I don't have. Um, yeah, but 
there we are, lots of beads. I don't know if you can see, including these wonderful sparkly teardrop crystal shapes in the chandelier, loads and loads of bling. Not much metallic, if I recall. Has been a while, but I think it's just in um, just in the, the the sort of ironwork of the chandelier, and maybe the um, yeah the the trailing leaves, vines, seaweed. I have no idea. The trailing swoopy things. Technical term. <laughs> there. So yeah. Absolutely lovely, really enjoy her. I did get a bit um, burnt out on that tail actually before the last video probably. So I had to have a couple of goes at it, but it all worked out in the end. And again, here's the back. So there we go. You can really see it with the back stitch in her face. Um, yeah, I couldn't be bothered to fasten those off and restart them, so I just went everywhere. There we are. As you may have guessed from looking at my um, my recent finishes, uh, last video and this, I do love to stitch a mermaid. And I'd seen this chart on eBay and I haven't seen it anywhere else. I don't know if it's out of print or whatever, so I'm warning you now, it's hard to get, um, but I absolutely loved her when I saw her, and it's this brilliant mermaid from Dome, who I think is possibly a Chinese company, but I really there's there's the instructions are written in English. Um, and there's no, absolutely no information whatsoever on this chart about Dome. All there is, is the copyright, all rights reserved, you can see there. That's, that's it. So, if you can find anything about Dome and where to um, purchase this design, please let me know because there's been loads of people on Instagram asking me where to get it. And I'd love to be able to help other people stitch it because she's beautiful. But yeah, um, it is a bit, a bit difficult to manage. This is just one huge piece of chart, um, which makes the stitching of her quite challenging. But they have been good. Sometimes when companies print charts on one big page, they print the chart over the creases. And then when you get the multiple creases joining, as you can see there, the paper gets all um worn away and then you can't see the chart but they haven't done this and that they've they've left gaps along the, all of the creases so there's no worries even if you get it for a, a second hand one there's no worries that the creases will have um removed any of the chart uh, it's in the gaps so that's good at least and it did come with actually a conversion to dmc because um dome apparently produced their own threads, cotton threads, metallic threads and beads. So there was information there on um, a conversion to DMC. But as with many conversions, um, it, it was a bit, I wasn't entirely happy with it. So let me show you my version. Here we go. Here she is. Now it's really difficult actually to get the fabric colour to come out properly on camera. This is a a very pale blue it's the fabrics called cotton sky and I think it's fabric flare um, because it's got this FF symbol on the back it's really handy they print the information on the on the it's, it's printed fabric so the reverse is white I'll just show you oh there we go the reverse is white not that you can really tell because it's such a pale blue. It's just printed on one side and they print the fabric information down the side, which is really handy. And I got it from the Sew It All website, which I'm pretty sure Pyrex Stitches, Claire has mentioned a couple of times in her video. She's a massive fan and she's in Australia. Um, so I think they've got several locations around the world, um, Australia, 
UK and probably America. So um, it's, it's quite easy to get hold of the fabric and it was quite nice to stitch with actually. Here we go, it's called Cotton Sky. I can never remember. So it's a very pale blue. I converted her to DMCs um, based on the conversion that was given in the chart. Um, but with quite a few tweaks, the most obvious being her hair. In the chart she's blonde and I converted her to a brunette. Now I did worry that I had some subconscious prejudice against blonde mermaids because I don't think I've stitched a blonde mermaid yet. But on Instagram you reassured me that no, the, blo uh, the brunette definitely is better than the blonde and I think part of the problem is when, when she's blonde her hair and her top is such a similar colour that um, it kind of looks a bit funny. And also I found it really difficult to, to get the right shades that um, gave her highlights of her hair but wasn't too brassy a yellow. But there we are. And then I had to convert to Krynik as well um, from the dome metallic colours going by the picture. And I actually had a couple of false starts on that because this purple here I originally, so all of this tail is all metallic, all of that is beautiful, down to there. Um, and it's so blingy, there's so many beads, like there's beads, oh, and the hair. She's got these beads draping, so these are just long strands fixed at the ends that are draping down. She's got these big um, bike, where are they, of bike cones? I don't know, big things that I just found off eBay. Um, in her headdress, hanging off her headdress. Um, she's got there's loads of metallic and beads in the foam around her tail. I don't know if that's really coming out properly on the camera, but there's so much bling, she's gorgeous. But yeah, this purple, Krynik, um, I had a full start with. I'd actually originally gone for a slightly lighter colour of purple and I couldn't figure out, I was really unhappy with how it was coming out but I couldn't figure out what the problem was because it looked really close to the, the cover photo and in the end I discovered that it was just a slightly too light shade of purple and how I found that out was I took a photo of what I'd stitched, so I stitched a small area of it with the other colours of metallic and put a black and white filter on it and then I took a photo of the cover picture and put a black and white filter on that. Hopefully I can dig that out and insert a picture so you can see what I mean as I talk about it. But looking at the two side by side I could see that because this, this turquoise, this teal, green, whatever it's called, aquamarine, I can't remember the colours, um, is slightly darker, and slightly towards black than what's on the chart, the purple was too light and so the, the gradation of the shading wasn't right and I really wasn't happy with it. So once I'd cracked that, I ordered the darker colour of purple and um, stitch that and it's just so much better. So there's a hint, if you're doing a conversion and you can't figure out quite why the colours just don't quite look right, check the black and white, check that you'll go, your shading from white to, to well, light to dark is correct. Here's the back, um, where you can see, well it might be actually difficult for you to see, that um, I've actually used, up to this point, um, including Siren in the Shipwreck, I think, I was using invisible sewing machine thread to do the beading, but I decided on this project to give Nymo beading thread a go and found it really quite enjoyable. Actually, I might have done that on Siren in the Shipwreck, I can't remember, but one of these, um, I decided to try it out and it is a lot easier than the invisible thread. I'm still gonna stick with the invisible thread for when I don't have a Nymo colour that's close enough to the fabric but when I do then definitely Nymo thread um, size D which I got off eBay 
is um, going to be my go-to choice because it's just a lot nicer, a lot more enjoyable to work with. It's less sort of springy and slippery and doesn't get knotted so much and yeah, very nice and keeps the beads nice and secure. There we go again, showing the back because there shouldn't be any shame around backs. It doesn't matter really what they look like as long as your front looks okay. Yeah, okay, having a neater back often comes from having a neater front. So that's why they say that your back should be as neat as your front because they do tie into each other, but you're only gonna really look at the front. So the odd here or there is fine. Oh, and uh, Brilliant Mermaid was a new start and a finish this year. Um, I finished at the beginning of June, I think. Yeah, apparently the 7th of June, so just around my birthday, actually. Don't remember that, but awesome, cool. Um, speaking of my birthday, and I mentioned previously already that 2018 has turned into the year of mirabilia for me. You've already seen two mirabilia finishes. Well, I stashed and stitched and started loads for my birthday in June, so look forward to those. I also have another, a third Mirabilia finish so far this year, and it was a new start this year. And it's this lovely lady. Now, she's not one that you see often either, but I just absolutely love her nouveau feel with these bright, vibrant colours in her dress. She's called Charlotte. I don't remember what the number is. I'll try and put it in the description if you're interested. But she's she's called to st well the chart calls for um a more green is it beach walk? I don't remember, but it's definitely a more green fabric. I guess to tie in with the lime greens of her skirt. Now I was trying to stitch from stash, so I went through my fabric stash to see if I could find a fabric that I thought would look good. So this is 28 counts Vigart Confederate Grey Cashel linen. Um, and I thought, yeah, that's gonna look great when I put the threads colours across. I thought it's really nice with the teal, the, the lime as you can see in the um, treasures, kind of pops on it, it works well with all the, the, the pinks, it's gonna be beautiful. And as I was working down, and I put more and more and more of this lime green in, I was less and less sure of my fabric uh, choice. Now, I always do this, I always have little wobbles, second guessing my decisions um, when I change colours and things. Um, but yeah, as I got more and more and more into this, into this lime green, I was like, oh heck, I'm not sure about this. Thankfully, when I then added in the rest of the blue and the rest of the pinks, it kind of balanced it out. But yeah, I'm still not 100% sold on it. I think this is one where, because it finished it quite recently, I think this is another one where I'm gonna have to walk away from it a bit, leave it for a bit, and then when I come back, I'll look at it and be like, yeah, I'm really pleased with that. But um, these treasures, these lime green treasures, speaking of those, they're so hard to find now. I didn't realise that Mill Hill stopped producing treasures. I suppose I did know that because there are some other Mirabilia designs that the treasures had stopped. But I was surprised because I'd used them in a previous Mirabilia and then when I tried to find them again, they just were gone. Um, but luckily I found just the lime, sort of the green ones as opposed to the sort of teeny bluey, gray ones. Um, I managed to find someone on eBay selling their packet. I only used one packet and I was like, yes, please. Um, managed to get that. So that was good. Cause I just had no idea. I didn't want to substitute them for, and cause they're leaves, right? If it was just beads or, you know, like the bicones or anything like that, you can, you can shop around and look for something that's fairly close in color, but it needed to be the, the sort of limey green to pick up with the colour from the skirt. The the bluey green has already been used in loads of the treasures. Um, and they're leaf shapes. And I was searching and searching and searching for alternatives and I just couldn't find anything. So really glad that I managed to get a hold of those. And the one last thing, uh, something I did change was her face. And I'll try and insert a picture here that I put up on Instagram the other day. 
because when I was stitching the face that was charted doing the back stitching, there was something that just really put me off about her forehead. And faces are just absolutely crucial for me in these designs. If they, if they don't look right, I just, I can't stand it. It's got to look right, otherwise I don't even want to stitch it. And having had some success changing a face from a Barbara Batts Forest Fairy chart um, that I stitched last year, I think, um, I was like, I know, I'll just, I'll have a go, see if I can change some of the back stitching to make it look a bit more natural. So I did, I had a go, I tried to sort of flatten out the forehead so that it wasn't such a big curve. Um, and thought, all right, I mean, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent happy with it, but I'll leave it at that. I'll go with that. Um, probably if I just fiddle around with it more. Um, I, you know, I won't end up actually making any improvements. Um, and then when I put, so that was a couple of weeks ago that I did that, maybe more. And then I decided to put, I, I just wanted to, when I, when I took a photo of the finish, I decided to put a side by side photo of the face changes that I'd made, changed the back, back stitch outlines. And lo and behold, I looked at it and I thought, you know what? I think the original face might be better. <laughs> this face has ended up looking a lot like the mermaid of the pearls face, which I really don't like. Like really, really puts me off. Now I have actually stashed that chart for my birthday. Um, you know, to treat to myself, why not? Um, because I managed to find online somewhere someone's alterations to the face that just make it look so much better. So now, and I put up this photo on Instagram and asked for your opinions, and you also prefer the original face. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna leave it for now, but this might go back into the whip pile because I might have to take out that outlining and see if I can get something closer to the original face, but that just, that the weird forehead bit is, is sorted out. Yeah, we'll see. So for now it's a finish, but who knows. And here we are with the back. So lots of nice big chunks of colour, so that's automatically neater before you do anything, which is handy. Okay. Oh, and um, there's very little beading in her, actually. It's, it's all just the treasures and beads in her hair. So the, the difficulty now, if you can't find that treasure and you wanted to stitch her, maybe you could swap it out Maybe you can just swap it out for some larger beads rather than going for all the leaves. The problem was that I already had half of the leaves. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a tricky one actually. If you want to stitch it now and you can't get hold of those treasures. I'm sure you creative people will come up with something. So having had a couple of my last finishes be also new starts since the last video, I've been, I've also started more. So my whip count has been climbing and climbing. So when I felt in the mood, I've gone back and looked through my whips and tried to make progress on those and see if any of those were close enough to a finish. Now you may have noticed that I really haven't been doing any of the sort of specialty stitch or needlework other than cross stitch techniques for quite a while. Um, I don't know if I got so excited about them that I just got burnt out on them. I was doing so many. I don't know. But it's been a while since I've done anything sort of specialty stitch or hardanger or anything like that. Which was kind of criminal because this next project was so close to being finished. Like, and I have. I finished it when I finally picked it up there was hardly anything left to do on it, so it was a really quick finish, so I don't know why I prevaricated for so long over this. But finally, 
I have finished Manica. It's a free design by Hardanger Carpacar, a Spanish designer, and it's a step-by-step -step tutorial, photo tutorial, all in Spanish, which was quite fun because I don't speak a word of Spanish. But the pictures were so clear and the steps were so good, this tutorial, that it didn't matter. I could just figure out what, I think there was the odd the name of the stitch that I translated just to double check I was doing the right thing. You know, look up another English tutorial for it. But yeah, I mean, it, it's brilliant. So I really recommend, um, I mean, her, her, her designs are not beginner. So if it's the first time you've ever done a hardanger, um, maybe try something a bit smaller and a bit less complicated first. But I haven't done that much hardanger. I only started it last year, I think. I think. You tell me. I can't remember. <laughs> um, and yeah, but this was lovely. It was lots of stitches that I hadn't seen before. There was these sort of, uh, I can't remember the names now, but there's this sort of, uh, where am I? This sort of sunflowery type stitch. And then um, there's these buttonhole stitch flowers. And then bit, um, basically all the rest of it is based on partial Greek crosses with some Smyrna stitches and, and um, I forget what that's called. Well, it's, it's faggot stitch, something like that. There's another name for it. Oh, I don't remember. And a lot of buttonhole stitching on the border. Um, yeah. So there was hardly anything left to, well, I say hardly anything. All I had left to do was do the filling stitches in this border around here. And it's just partial Greek cross so after partial Greek cross after partial Greek cross. So once you get in a rhythm, I mean, I think I sat and watched it, uh, sat and watched it, sat and stitched it during a stage of the Tour de France. And that was it, finished, couldn't believe it. Why did it take me so long? Um, so I'll put a link to her website in the description box. She offers quite a lot of other freebies. Um, I'm really tempted actually, she's got a beautiful Biscornu design. Uh, I can't remember the name of that one either, that I'm really tempted by. Um, but given that I haven't really been in the mood for Hardanger and other techniques a lot recently, I'm kind of holding off on that one. But so this is stitched, it's um, 27 count Zweigart Linda in cream. Um, and then I use DMC Pearl Cotton in Blanc, um, Pearl 8 and Pearl 12. Um, and then I've just got it um, resting on a piece of Zweigart linen in Camel, just so you can see the, the cutouts, because on white it wouldn't really show through. Um, yeah, I don't know what, I'll show you the back quickly. It looks pretty much the same as the front, I mean, so similar that I almost did an Ingeborg and um, showed you the back instead. Um, yeah, I'm, ch I'm having a think about what I'm gonna do to finish this. And I have a sneaky plan. Well, it's a half-baked idea at the minute that I might see if I can somehow figure out, let me see if I can actually mock it up for you turning it into a purse, a sort of clutch purse of some sort because it's got this nice triangular end that might work for a flap. So something a bit like that, obviously with the, with the, the sides in. And then it's got the beautiful design on the back. Actually, I wasn't sure if this would work, but actually putting it together, roughly, roughly assembling it like this yeah I think that would be really nice I think what I'd do is I'd put um I'd square this off square this off put um the contrasting color two triangles there so I've got a flat I don't know opening um body for the purse and then maybe keep the the um the flap have the having the triangle so that you can see this part and the the contrast oh, ok 
okay, watch this space. Because I have actually, when I've been having problems with my stitchy bag, I have actually been cheating on cross stitch with other crafts. Um, predominantly sewing, as in sewing machine sewing. Um, so I'll, I'll put a few pictures at, at the end, I'll talk about some of my sewing projects. Um, but I've, I've been getting into making purses. So, aha. So last in the finishes that I've still got here to show you, not last of my finishes though, is this project. Lovers, artwork by Jean-Baptiste Monge, um, charted for cross stitch by Lena Lawson Needlearts. Now I started this project almost exactly two years ago, I think. Yeah, I haven't written it down. Helpful. And I finished it maybe last week. I'd have to check on Instagram, I can't remember. <laughs> um, I haven't been uh, with my not posting videos. It hasn't just been YouTube that I completely dropped off the face of the planet for. Um, I also really struggled with Instagram. Now that's a whole different story because, rabbit trail. My big issue with Instagram recently has been that suddenly my feed was full of people that I'd never chosen to follow. My Instagram is basically cross stitch, like it's not even for friends or family or anything else, it's just cross stitch and embroidery, it's just inspiration and a way for me to track progress in what I'm doing. And so to suddenly have like half naked women and men doing bodybuilding and I have got no clue what else, where all this stuff was coming from, I am not interested. And I would spend all of the time that I was on Instagram unfollowing these people, and then I think I'd cracked it, and then I'd come back the next day, and it would happen all over again, and I just, I couldn't do it. So I completely, I, I went off Instagram for ages. So even if I look on Instagram, this probably isn't gonna tell me when I actually finish this. Rabbit trail over. Okay, so back to this. Yeah, I think I started it, almost two years to the day before I finished it. So it's almost exactly two years that it took me to stitch this. And I'll confess, it was a little bit of a struggle at times. I don't wanna put anyone off stitching it though, because a lot of that was my fault. Um, but let's get the, the sort of stats out of the way. So the fabric is, again, 27 counts of I Got Linda, this time in antique white. I really love this fabric. It's um, cotton so it doesn't stretch and, and go all out of shape like some of the um, even weaves with artificial synthetic fibres in. Um, it's very sturdy um, and it's really cheap <laughs> so I really like it and again if you if you lay your threads then the coverage isn't an issue at all it's it's you can get a really nice coverage. Um, I mean yeah probably 16 count is like you know Pièce de la résistance, but sorry, yeah. Um, but you can, yeah, you can get really nice results on this, and it's like half the price of linen. So you know, I just wish it came in more colours. And it's also, if you want black even weave, twenty-seven count Linda is a good shout, because the only other option I can find is, um, is it Cashel? Or Belfast? I don't know. Right, there we go. Okay, so yeah, I did have a few struggles with this project. Um, can I just say I absolutely love Jiminy. I call him Jiminy. Jiminy Cricket on, on, on his head there. It's po probably my favourite part of this whole project. Um, I know someone on Instagram pointed out the cute little butt crack that she's got. <laughs> uh, yeah, and the toad are pretty cool. Yeah, so um, basically the problems that I had partly were my expectations. When I bought this chart, I didn't realise that it was such an, in, mm, involved is the wrong word, but there are a lot of blends. It's a very, very detailed conversion to cross stitch. So pretty much every colour has a corresponding blend, which I've got to say, like the results are phenomenal. Um, but yeah, that was a kind of a, a crash course in um, projects with lots of blends because I haven't I haven't done anything like a big Teresa Windsor or anything yet although it, it's, it's, it's on the cards hopefully I haven't started one yet but anyway um, yeah so that was um, 
you know, if you're organised, I put all of mine on thread cards. If you have three, uh, what am I talking about? Pre-cut threads, all to the same length, then it's so easy. And then also the, the thread cards, oh, I should have got them, um, with a space for the blends, the symbol for the blends, then it's just so easy. Really easy, Just you know, it's just another colour. Um, you just pull one strand from the first colour, one strand from the next, you've got a strand that's twice as long as usual, but, you know, it was it was still fine. I didn't even bother cutting that in half, I just stitched with it, it was fine. Um, yeah, and it's just another colour. So, uh, and then when you're done with it and you've cut it off, you just put it in the space on the thread card against that symbol for the blend, and done. Yeah, so um, the next sort of struggle that I had, my own fault again, was that I didn't look closely enough at the symbols. Um, so the the moon is lots and lots and lots of different shades of sort of creams and pale yellows and light tans and stuff like that. And it turns out that there's two symbols in the moon that look pretty similar. I mean, when you know that they're different, you can tell the difference. But all I saw when I was looking through the kit, all I was looking for was a crescent moon. No, a uh, uh, parentheses bracket. Um, and so when I looked down the key and saw a crescent moon, I thought, oh, that must be it. And I ended up stitching all of this, all of the sort of up to about there in the moon. Well, maybe, uh, no, that way, there in the moon using the crescent moon colour instead of the parentheses, which we might have got away with, except for then in this part of the moon, the bottom part, you need to use the crescent moon colour as well. So I was not a happy bunny. I had to rip out all of that and restitch it. And once I'd fixed it, it got put in the naughty bin for, for a while. Um, yeah, so that that was struggle. Mostly my fault. I mean, yeah, it would have been nice if they'd used more obviously different symbols. But given that there's so many symbols in this chart anyway, maybe they were running out. I don't know. Um, or maybe even okay, use those same symbols, but for very different colours. Because the problem was it was a, like a a mid cream and a light tan. That were the two symbols so it wasn't like i went through the key saw the crescent moon and went oh god that's brown that can't be right that's not in the moon i went oh that looks all right i went with it but yeah so i should have taken more care looking at the key basically um and then the back stitch i'm you know back stitch agnostic i don't know if that's quite the right word but i'm not bothered i don't mind back stitch most of the time the, the time that it really gets me down is times like this, basically, when it's really, is going for a realistic effect. And it's beautiful, like it's absolutely worth it. But it's so difficult to see on the chart where each stitch should begin and end. So that's why I struggled. But having said all that, it's not, if, if you avoid the pitfalls that well, you can't really avoid the back stitch, you just have to suck it up for that. But if, if you avoid the other pitfalls that I had, then it's a lovely, uh, yeah, it's a lovely stitch. It's, um, and it's a beautiful, I actually prefer it over the original artwork, I didn't realise, because um, I was a bit worried that the colours were, were quite muted and drab, if you see what I mean. I'm, I'm very much, as you have as you guessed, a bright, saturated colour type stitcher person in general um and so these were a bit drab but actually they're, they're more vibrant they're much more lovely colors than even the original artwork so yeah i'm very impressed this one's on the to frame list let me just quickly show you the back again for the copious amounts of wall space that i don't have um i haven't bought a frame but i have found um I went to the range, it's a shop in the UK that sells like home decor stuff and, and craft stuff. Um, and they have a huge selection of frames, ready-made frames. Um, I didn't realise this because I've been struggling. I, I kind of would go around the supermarkets and see what they had and, 
um, try and make do from that and, and struggle to find some that are quite the right proportions um, and big enough. Um, but they have a huge range of frames, so I'm just biding my times um, and saving a bit of cash to go there and just have a splurge, like take my finishes with me. I'll look like a right numpty sitting in the aisles um, holding my cross stitch projects up to the frames to try and pick the one that I want. But yeah, and just and just blitz it that way because they had. So I was amazed, absolutely amazed. So if you're in the UK, check out the range if you're looking for off the shelf frames. Did I show you the back? I can't remember. So <laughs> just in case I didn't, here we go. Here's the back. A bit messier again because of the back stitch. I can't. I'll, I'll put a lot more effort in making the cross stitch neat than I will the back stitch. I just can't be bothered. I don't like starting and finishing and turning my project over. But also with backstitch, you know, there's only so much you can do to make it neat. You end up having to do double running stitch instead if you want to actually make it neat. So, there we go, try and get it in focus. So, very cute, really enjoyed it. Okay, so that was the last of the finishes that I've actually got here to show you. But I do have a couple um, that I've taken photos of, that I'm going to insert, um, that have been gifted out to people. I don't know if you can hear my stomach rumbling. <laughs> um, so when my friend, my best friend, uh, told me that she was pregnant at the beginning of the year, my first, well, okay, my first thought was, oh, congratulations, that's amazing, and then the next thought was, being a crafter, I'm sure you can relate, um, what am I going to make? And they had the date for the baby shower in July, end of July. So there I was thinking I had loads of time to get things sorted and baby suddenly decided to surprise all of us, give us all a bit of a scare and arrive eight weeks early. Oh my gosh. So it was the end of June. I'd had all of these ideas, all these plans and suddenly she arrived. The um, baby shower was, you know, gone. Um, Council obviously also put having a baby shower when she's already arrived. Um, but yeah, so so she's fine. Mum's doing well as well. She's at home now. Um, it's yeah, I've I've seen her. She's so cute. Um, but yeah, so that left with the big panic of what to do for her present. Now I can't let anyone's important life events go by without cross-stitching something for them, not in sort of immediate family and friends. So I did do a cross-stitch for their wedding. Um, I was a bridesmaid and I, I did a cross-stitch for their wedding. Um, a bothy threads kit. I'll see if I've got a photo and insert it. Um, and so obviously they're having a baby, I can't let that go without doing a cross-stitch. But amazingly, I must have had foresight or something. Because years ago, I'd seen these two kits from Anchor, Humphrey's Corner, baby birth samplers, and I had no one for a boy and one for a girl. I had no one, if, I mean I was in university, no one I knew was having babies then. But I just loved the design so much that I thought, you know what, well, I'm going to stitch them. And surely someone will come along someday that I can give these samplers to. And um, so I stitched everything apart from the personalisation. But actually that's not true. I started it and got like halfway through, 10 years ago or something. And then in 2016 when I was going through, um, maybe it was 2015, I don't remember, a couple of years ago, when I got back into cross stitch again big time, I went through all of these 10 year old whips that I had. And um, started to, to finish some of them off. And that was one of them, I finished it off um, all apart from personalisation. So I already had it tucked away, the, the one for the girl. I didn't do the one for the boy, I just did the one for the girl. Um, because it turned out this was another one that I, it was on Ada and I didn't know about pin stitch and there's lots of colour changes and a very sketchy back stitch and I kind of, yeah, got burnt out on it on that, and especially you know, when I didn't have anyone in mind to give a gift to. So it was absolutely perfect. I popped in the personalisation um, and I had some other d ideas for baby shower gifts, so I was going to do some sewing stuff. Um, and was going around the supermarket looking for stuff for this gift. 
and saw that they had a frame that was perfect for this design and it was only four pounds. I was like, wow, you know, it just, it all kind of came together. So she got um, a birth sampler, which I should have inserted a picture for. And also, I'd had in my bedroom before all the building work happened and the bedrooms got moved around and everything. Um, I had a wall of cross stitch, finished cross stitches that I'd done in, during university and um, framed myself, you know, ordered the um, custom frames online and then stretched and, and, and put together the frames myself. And um, it was of this cute, it's a Some Bunny to Love series, it's a little ballerina in a green tutu with yellow accents and the nursery, so my best friend, she sent me photos of the nursery, I asked her, trying to, you know, um, suss out ideas for gifts that would coordinate with the nursery decorations. Luckily she finished the nursery before, um, you know, like the weekend before or something. Um, so she sent me photos of the nursery and this tied in really lovely, the nursery is decorated in yellow, so the, this tied in really well with um, the nursery decorations. So I was like, right, well that can go to a, a new home, a uh, loving new home, because I can't, I can't bear to let these go really, they're not my taste anymore, but it is a bit heart wrenching, you know, I want them, I want them to go somewhere they'll be appreciated, and they will there. Um, so yeah, so that was the cross stitching part, and then traditionally, for baby gifts, I've knitted or crocheted or woven blankets, but the more I've done it, the more practical, well, the more, I don't know, the more babies I guess that I've seen come into the world, the more practical my thinking has become. And I realised that the if you're making a blanket and it's going to get used, then it needs to be able to just get chucked easily in the wash. If <laughs> I kind of felt like the blankets that I've made so far have been so nice that they've not got used because they're too nice to get sick and whatever on. So um, I went around the craft shop, Hobby Craft, looking for some yarn to potentially weave a blanket from. But none of it is easy wash, none of it is just chucking the, even the, you know, the acrylic stuff is just chucking the washing machine, no worries, it's, it's all a bit particular, cool, delicate wash, all of this kind of stuff. I was like, no, they've got too much to be thinking about to be dealing with that. So that ruled out the baby blanket idea. I'm also trying not to buy more stuff because I have enough, more than enough, like lifetimes worth of stuff. Um, so... Having got my sewing machine out and given it a quick service, um, I looked around for sewing ideas and settled on a nappy caddy, so basically a, st a storage basket with handles that you can put all of the assorted gear, paraphernalia that are required for babies changing nappies. So, you know, having your nappies to hand. Um, with your, your wipes and your, your nappy sacks and um, creams and lotions and, and toys to keep them occupied and all of that, having it in a carryable storage solution so that it can follow the baby around the house rather than having to take baby back upstairs to the changing station all the time. So I had a lot of fun. Um, I went off inspired by a YouTube tutorial, which I'll try and link if you're interested. By the way, I've, I've, Chris, cross stitch is done now, I'm, I'm, I'm into sewing. <laughs> so if you're not interested in anything other than cross stitch, then you can stop watching now. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, going off uh, inspired by a tutorial for a storage caddy with divide, divided sections um, on YouTube, which I'll try and link below, if I can find it again. Um, I did my own custom sized one for Nappy Kelly, so I should have inserted a picture of that by now, uh, which was really interesting to do. Uh, I ended up using all sorts of different interlinings or fusible interfacings that I'd not used before, including Decoville, um, which was an interesting one. I think it um, is right on the limits of what my machine is happy doing. 
Um, I also put um, Corex, it's um, corrugated plastic that's used in signage um, on the bottom to make it give it a nice stiff um, base so that they can lug some, you know, because lotions and potions can get kind of heavy um, or your nappy, I'm talking about wipes, and all of that can get a bit heavy. And um, made some handles um, for the first time, which was really interesting. I wasn't generous enough with the fabric, so that was fun trying to get them stitched shut. I put cotton cording through the centre and it wasn't generous enough, so getting kind of close with the invisible zipper foot, trying to get that done. Um, but yeah, it, it came out really well. I was pleased with it and so were the new mum and dad. I think they think it will come in handy. Um, but yeah. And then the last little bit of sewing that I'd like to mention. Um, I said earlier, thinking about the finish for Malika, about turning it into a purse and how I got into sewing purses. Well, um, for a couple of my friends' birthdays, I decided to make them purses and found this really, really cool pattern. It's called the Necessary Clutch Wallet by Emmeline Bags. Em Emmeline. I'm not entirely sure of the title designer. I'll put a link to it though if you're interested. And it's this really cute clutch purse that's got enough room for your phone um, and like a slot that you can put your keys in so that you've got everything that you need with you when you go out and it's got um, places that you can clip a detachable strap to, a zip pocket for your coins. It's a really, really well thought out design. Um, and it was, it was enjoyable to make. I actually started off trying to make it out of vinyl and that was a bit of an error um, because it was too thick, thicker than my machine could really comfortably handle. Um, and obviously with vinyl, you only get one shot um, so I, I ended up um, treating myself to a Singer sewing machine, um, which I haven't actually managed to use yet, um, a, a vintage one, um, the 201 I think, I don't remember, uh, but I haven't managed to use it yet because it needs a little bit of TLC to get it working and also because it's so heavy I don't actually have a table that's sturdy enough for it to sit on at the minute. But funnily enough, um, some family friends were getting rid of a Singer sewing machine cabinet, sans machine, um, so they bequeathed that to me. But that also needs a bit of TLC too, so before too long hopefully I'll have capability to, to do a bit more heavy duty projects. But for these birthday presents, uh, one of the reasons that the pattern's so good is that you can make a purse out of if you get like a fat quarter bundle or something like that it's perfectly suited um, to the pattern which is great because I don't have a massive fabric stash I tend to just pick up the odd fat quarter bundle if I see it and it catches my eye in the shop um, so that was great I you know tailored the fabric choices to, to their tastes and uh, used some magnetic clasps made a few adjustments to the pattern just to get the colours in different places um, and yeah so they were happy bunnies. I had great fun um, and that's inspired me to want to sew loads more purses and bags and funnily enough I haven't actually sewn myself one yet and my current purse is falling apart at the seams but maybe someday I will actually get around to doing that and um, hopefully I'll get creative with the finish for Malika which is super exciting. So there we are, those are all of the finishes and fully finished objects that I've had since my last video. I'm going to take a break now, put the battery on charge and get organised trying to get out the projects that were already started by last video that I've worked on since then to show you. And then I'll also have new starts, lots of new starts since then and possibly even we'll get into some of the stash that I've been doing because as I say it was my birthday a couple of months ago and I went a bit mad uh, <laughs> uh, but until then thank you for joining me I hope you've enjoyed it thank you for all of your patience um, we've waited a long time for this video thank you for all the messages checking if I was okay asking if I'm making another video I do really appreciate all of it um, I really do hope that I'm going to get into a more regular routine 
of these videos. But I'll be back soon with another one because I'm going to film it in a few minutes. So, eh, see you next time. Thanks for watching.